So this year, for my birthday, my wife gave me one of the f most awesome presents I've ever gotten, and um, it was definitely the best present that I got this year. It is a framed piece of paper that is from the last real job that I actually ever had. And um, it says, Dear Chris Claflin, Due to reasons including, but not limited to, insubordination and harassment, your employment with our company is being terminated as of March 17th, 2017. Sincerely, my old boss. This is the story of how running almost ruined my life. So I just want to first start off by clearing the record. I have never harassed anyone, at least not intentionally. I, I'm a very reasonable person. At the time this happened though, it was sort of when political correctness and all the craziness that has actually spilled onto the streets recently, it's when this was starting to work its way into corporate America and um, I was basically fired on an accusation. I'm not gonna go too much deeper into it because that's not what this episode is about. This episode is about, it's about how my need to run could have trapped me in a life that wasn't the best for me or my family. So I wanna take you to the place that I used to work and explain exactly where I was a few years ago. So this is the business park where I used to work. Welcome. It looks really nice here actually. The mountains are super pretty. <coughs> but it stinks because there's a sewage treatment plant right over there. This job was like a lot of jobs that people have to work. I really hated most of the work that I did. Uh, it was a job though. And for me, the thing that kept me here for way longer than I should have been here for is that the schedule, so I was, I was a lower level manager, and I was able to set my schedule first and then the schedule of my staff, which allowed me to set my schedule around the times that I wanted to go out and run, that I wanted to recover. One day, after I had voiced my very strong opinion on the fact that some of the new policies were negatively affecting the people we were supposed to care for, um, I got called in to work and uh, to the main office and they sat me down and they were like, look, you're done here. When I got fired, I was like, what do I do? I remember the feeling that I had when I sat down with HR and my boss, who basically said, you're done. And I've never felt so much rage inside. Not at my boss, because how can you be upset with someone who just can't help but be a numbskull? I was upset at myself. I was furious that I allowed myself to be in a position where someone else could have this kind of power over my life and just sign a piece of paper, this piece of paper, and terminate all of my income and leave me scrambling to pick up the pieces. And so I swore to myself at that moment that I would never work for someone else again. Running almost ruined my life, and it almost ruined my life because of, of, of this. I stayed with this company for as long as I did because of the flexibility with the schedule, because like running was the one thing every day that I felt 
as long as I can get my run in, as long as I can feel my lungs filling with air, as long as I can feel my heart beating in my chest, as long as I can go and hit the mountain trails, as long as I can just put my miles in and feel like I am in complete control of my body, the world can be falling apart around me and I can deal with it at least. Like running has always been just like my grounding center that I need. And I just never have been able to let that go. And because of that, I stayed at this place that wasn't good for me and wasn't good for my family for way too long. <sighs> I know a lot of people who have given up really great opportunities and have let their lives fall into this rut that was formed by their need to put in the miles every single day. And that's what it was for me. So getting fired was one of the best things that has ever happened to me. Because even though running was the reason that I wasn't moving forward in life where I was, running's taught me a lot of really important lessons that helped me grow my business that helped me move my life further in the direction that I want it to be. So I'm gonna share those three, those three things with you back in the studio. So even though um, maybe running almost ruined my life. I'm in a much different place now than I was almost four years ago. And the skills and tools that I use to get out of the rut that I was in are skills and tools that I picked up through my years and years of running. So maybe in a way, running saved my life? I don't know. But here are three really important lessons that I've learned from running that you can use and just keep in the back of your mind whether you're training for a certain time or trying to build a business or just become a better person, they're applicable for whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Number one is real positive change takes time. It takes daily consistency. Because of the time and focus required to make a big change like that, you sort of have to pick and choose what you really want in life and what you kind of think you want in life and separate those because you can't get everything. You could probably get anything you want because all it takes is time, consistency, discipline, and hard work. But it takes so much of those things that you can't get everything all at once. You sort of have to decide what it is you really want and then head out on that path and don't stop. The second thing that I've learned is no matter how good you get at something, there's always going to be something else that comes along and derails you for a little bit. I can't tell you how many times I have been at the peak of my physical fitness and gotten sick or injured or something else has prevented me from running and then I lose that like edge and then I have to regroup mentally and start working my way back up again. It is the same thing in life and unless you have a plan on how to deal with those moments mentally and unless you think about strategies on how to get out of those situations before they come up, it's really easy to get demoralized, kind of lose sight of your vision and give up. So if you want to overcome that while things are going well, start planning for when things aren't going so well. And the third thing that I've found over all the years that I've spent running and <laughs> all the years I've spent on this planet, you need to do you. Because life is too short and too difficult to try to be something that you're not. Sometimes running your own path is going to be a lot harder and more challenging than running the well-worn trail. But if that's what makes you feel alive, then go for it and you don't have to apologize to anyone else. Here's a quick story. When I was in college, I never really hit my, my full potential as a runner. I know that. I could have put in a lot more work, sacrificed a lot more, and made running my entire life. And there were guys on my team who were like that. And I, I know it bothered them that there were members of the team that enjoyed themselves more than they 
put in the work. That's a bad way to put it because we worked really, really hard. But looking back, after everything has been said and done, those guys that were super intense and hell-bent on beating everyone else and running the fastest times, none of them are running anymore. They didn't really enjoy the process. And if you are not enjoying the process, then what is the point? In my opinion, in running and in life, it's so much better to enjoy the ride than to be recognized for something that you didn't really want to be doing in the first place. So those are three things to keep in mind as you're going about your mileage, as you're hitting the trails, as you're planning for your next race, and just trying to figure out this weird thing that we're all doing on this rock that's spinning around the sun.